one of the stars of Iron Man 3. Wouldn't it be great to be Iron Man? Oh, this is brilliant. Uh, just have a sip of my wine. Oh, useless, stupid mask. Let's start the show! <laughs> much we've got a very exciting show for you tonight Hollywood's coming calling Gwyneth Paltrow's on the show <laughs> she is ready set go double Olympic gold medal winner Mo Farah is here <laughs> I know I know the hilarious Lee Mack is on the show <laughs> plus we've got music from Hertz ladies and gentlemen yeah They look like visual to visual. Oh, good to tell us about Iron Man 3. Now, Iron Man is one of my favorite superheroes. Here he is showing off his amazing powers. <laughs> and Gwyneth is back as Iron Man's love interest. Shorter than I remember. Uh, now, I love... <laughs> <laughs> I must ask her, how do you have sex with a man made of iron? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> uh, really looking forward to meeting Mo Farah. Oh, Mo Farah. I think we could all remember where we were when Mo won his second gold medal at the Olympics. Uh, I was here. Yeah. <laughs> he got gold, I got bronze. <laughs> What inspiration Mo is. You know, thanks to him, a whole generation of British people have taken up running. They have. <laughs> 50 more yards, you're there. Yeah. <laughs> Mo, Mo trains in Africa. Yeah. I don't know why training in Africa would make you such a fast runner. Uh, but it does. <laughs> As well as running, Mo has set a trend for people doing their own signature poses. Uh, there's the Mo Bot, obviously, uh, the Lightning Strike, and my own personal favourite, the I'm with Stupid. <laughs> hey, let's get some guests on! <laughs> Later, we'll be having music from Hertz! <laughs> but first, let's play tonight. He is going out. It's Lee Mack! <laughs> oh! Oh! Hello, Graham. I can only come out <laughs> I've struck double goal tonight. It's Mo Farah! Oh, 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 oh. Hello, sir. Oh, very welcome. Have a seat there, Mr. Farah. And to the bottom of the guest, it is Miss Gwyneth Paltrow! Welcome all, welcome all. Can I just say how pleased I was that I won the race to the sofa with Mo? <laughs> <laughs> You're not very good over the short distance, is it? <laughs> no, we can work on my speed. Yeah. No, it is, it's so lovely to see uh, Mo here. Now, are you one of those people, because you're training all the time, are you totally out of touch with popular culture? Have you seen any of the Iron Man films? No, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing it. Uh, oh, I haven't, I've not seen it, but I'm excited. Have you seen the first two? No, I haven't, well, but not... I want to see it. <laughs> just, want... just how looking forward to it are you? <laughs> yeah. Mo, Mo, uh, do you know who that lady is? <laughs> yes, I do. I want to give you more reason to watch. Oh, OK. Uh -huh. Do you know who I am? Have you seen this show? <laughs> no. I've never seen this show before. <laughs> do, you, do you know who I am? <laughs> I've never seen you this show before. <laughs> Listen, well. hey, I'm not bothered. I thought I was going to be sitting next to Mia Farrow. <laughs> <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow, we've missed you. Because oh. no, the last time you were here, you were uh, promoting a book, but now, properly in a big movie, <laughs> Iron Man Three is back, and yes. this time it's—I mean, you're properly in it. Uh, yes, actually, in this movie, I do get to—you know—kick ass. Kick ass. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> yeah. 
basically what happens is there's a really, really bad guy, a villain. A who, villain? A villain. Oh, no. I know. It's very <laughs> uncharacteristic in a comic book movie. I hope Iron Man can do something about it. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. Um, and I get to wear the Iron Man suit for a while, and it's very cool. But is it really you in the suit? Well, yes, it, it was me in a lot of the suit, and then they CGI other bits, but it was mostly me wearing the suit when I wore the suit. <laughs> so, that's you with a bit of the suit. <laughs> uh, when you're in it, is it heavy, is it horrible, what is it? Um, it's quite cumbersome, but it's not, it's not so bad. I mean, you know, I thought it was going to be terrible, because in the first two Iron Man movies, Robert was like, he would put on the suit and he would start sweating and have a nervous breakdown and like meditate and cry. <laughs> and he was in hell. He was like, this is the worst. And so I was like, wow, I really better mentally prepare for this suit. And I put it on and I was like, this guy is a wimp. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is really not that bad. Uh, but apparently it was very cool when your son Moses. Oh, yes. He was on set that day. Yes. And he loves Iron Man and he's a big fan. and. I don't think I'll ever forget his face when he saw me walk out wearing the Iron Man suit. That's amazing. It was a really good moment, yeah. Is that the first thing he's kind of seen his mom do? It's the... Yes, I think so. And that and my Sylvia Plath movie, of course. Of course, yeah. The um, kids love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's really happy. <laughs> uh, uh, but I think... So, and it's definitely the first... You know, he sort of is now put together... Like, the other day we had this moment where... I saw, I watched his seven-year-old brain put together who I was. Like, we were going to see the Justin Bieber concert, because he loves Justin Bieber. Of course. Oh, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he said to me, you know, maybe Justin Bieber knows who you are from an Iron Man movie. So it was like dawned on him that... You could be a connection. To Justin Bieber. Yeah, Hitler. you could be the passport to Justin. Or, or, or the monkey. Uh, either one. Oh, he's got a monkey now. Yeah, he's got a monkey. Yeah. yeah. I think his mother needs to step in now. <laughs> <laughs> to say, no, Justin, yeah. you can't have a monkey. <laughs> Actually, talking about uh, spoiled children, uh, there... Uh... Wait, wait a minute! <laughs> Talk about Justin, not Moses. OK, good. No! <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, there's an amazing bit of merchandising from the Iron Man movie. Uh, this mask, where is it? Oh, it's here. Hang on. <laughs> no, seriously, this is really... Have you seen this? No. Oh, it's amazing. So, now, it, what it does, it's incredible that they sell it to children because it actually fires stuff. So, I've got to... No, you put, if you put those... The health and safety you want, you put is those this on. True? This is not true. This is true. Seriously, we have you, to put health and gonna... safety... Wait till you see. Wait till you see. Where was it made? North Korea. <laughs> 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 I'll tell you in a minute. OK, can we have some music, please? Some music? I'm okay. fine. Oh, OK. Oh, okay. OK, hang on. Here we go. Have you got a glass on? Yeah. There yeah. you go. Direction. No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't do that. So. No, it's light entertainment. I try not to hurt the guests. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Iron Man 3, it opens on uh, next Thursday, the 25th of April. And in this, like, you and Tony Stark, you're properly a couple. I mean, you live together and everything yes. in this one. It is a slight mystery why you are together. I mean, he seems quite a difficult boyfriend, I would say. I think, you know, I think, well, if you start in the first movie, she's his assistant, and there's this kind of sexual chemistry that they have. It's very sweet. And then with all the movies, the relationship progresses, and now they're living together. And I think he is quite difficult, but I think she's a very patient woman. She's very sweet, and she can deal with his megalomania and, you know, his suit building and all that. All right, well, here's, here's a little taste of uh, you and Robert Downey Jr., and this is... You really demonstrating your patience, I would say. <laughs> I'm saying. That makes it look like a relationship film. There's a lot of fighting and flying around and explosions <laughs> as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, now, in terms of creating synthetic men, and, and Lee, Lee down the end there, you have built. Uh, it wasn't an Iron Man, but you built a man. I did build a man. Yeah, I was. Um, there was about fifteen. Wait a minute. What? This is true. <laughs> I made Graham from Plasticine. 
<laughs> oh, wow, I loved moulding him into that shape. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but his fingers smell. <laughs> Just scene. working on some new catchphrases. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, my I, girlfriend, well, then girlfriend, now uh, boyfriend, long story. Um, <laughs> no. The plasticine came in handy, the bit extra. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, my then girlfriend, now wife, at the time, about 15, 20 years ago in Britain, there was a spate of carjackings. Do you remember this? Yes. It was in all the papers, and women driving on their own were, were uh, particularly vulnerable. So I got it into my head, I nearly just started going out with her, that to help protect her, I'd, I'd build this man, and so when she's driving on her own, he would sit in the passenger seat... Aww, that's oh, and, nice. ..and protect my girlfriend. Aww. So I made this man, and we called him Arthur, cos he was Arthur man. <laughs> and he, was, he was only from the waist up, obviously, cos doing the legs would be unnecessarily... You know what I mean? You don't need to, that much you'd, backstory. You'd feel a yeah. fool. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just a waist and a head, I mean, football head, tights over his football head, flat cap, and, um, what she'd do is she'd get out of the car outside our house, and then, obviously, like, the neighbours would look through and think for a minute, you know, that's the guy in the car, but then she'd pick him up quite casually and just bring him in. <laughs> and at this point, the thing, and the poor fella's got no legs and she's just carrying him by his head. <laughs> <laughs> and she'd just bring him in the house. And, then, and the worst bit is when we left him in the car, we used to leave him overnight, so he'd just sit in the car and the neighbours would be like... <laughs> 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 the man with no features is still sitting in the car. He's probably, he doesn't want to come out because he's scared of being carried around by his head. By the, by the... <laughs> and, and that was that was that was me. And, and she never got carjacked, so it worked. Well, obviously, but, but pro... if, if someone saw a guy with tights over his head, yeah. <laughs> with no features, it's yeah. going to scare anyone, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> they think, oh, someone's got her already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's true>. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, Mo Farah, it's a huge uh, weekend for you. Uh, you're running the London Marathon. Well, you're running half the London Marathon. Uh, but now, I suppose what's going to change it all is it's all happening in kind of the shadow of what went on in Boston. Mm -hmm. Now, how are they marking it? Are they referencing what happened in Boston? Yeah, no, definitely. We're go they're going to take uh, responsible for the race and, you know, in terms of security and everything else. Uh, I spoke to Dave Bedford, who's the race organiser. Uh, and there's going to be a lot more out there in terms of, you know, security and stuff. And people are wearing, people are wearing black ribbons, I know, and I think there's some, they're having some silence before the start of the race and everything. As a respect, yeah. there's going to be a minute silence for the people, you know. It's, it's a sad what happened. Uh, and then, you know, after that, I think the race would just be as normal. Yeah. But I mean, are you nervous or does it kind of spur you on and kind of think, you know, business as usual? <laughs> it's just, you know, you don't want to see anything happening, what has happened in Boston, no, God, obviously. No. But at the same time, you know, it's just what you do every day and the guys, everybody else, you know, they do a great job anyway, so they will take care of that. And you just got to take it as a normal race and enjoy it and just do what you normally do. Now, you're running half of it. Are you running mm -hmm. the first half or the second half? I'm running the first half. You can't... You couldn't run the second half. You'd just be waiting for um, ages. Going, oh, <laughs> yeah. Now, if at the 13-mile mark you're feeling, feeling fresh, will you keep going? My aim is not to keep going. This, is, this year is just to practice and get ready for next year. Next year I'm going to do the full marathon and my aim is to come out here and just get a practice. You know, you have to wake up early in the morning. You've got to make I sure know. you eat well. yes. You're going to do a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Because, now, Lee, have you done a marathon or you trained for a marathon? Don't take the piss out of me. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you trained for one, didn't you? I did train for one. Can I point out, by the way, last time we chatted, you rightly pointed out that the waistcoat was fooling no one because it was holding everything in. This is how unfit I am. So I wasn't going to wear it tonight, so I thought you'd take it again. And genuinely, the reason I'm wearing a waistcoat, and this is the truth, I realised that I've accidentally come away with my son's tie, and it goes... <laughs> <laughs> how ridiculous is that? <laughs> and I'm like, ten minutes before I come and I go, I can't go on like that! <laughs> <laughs> so that's, I'm not doing it to hold it in, I'm doing it because... Uh, you look very I've come smart. come away with a child's tie on. <laughs> very smart. Um, but yes, no, I did train for the marathon um, about three, four years ago, the Paris Marathon. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got to about 13 miles in the training, and then I went to see uh, the doctor because I had this pain in, in my knee. And he said uh, that my, one leg was shorter than the other, so I had to stop running the marathon. Yes, I was absolutely delighted. <laughs> and it was pointed out to me that if you... I won't roll the trials of legs up, but if you actually... Would you mind, Gwyneth, feeling my knees? <laughs> you can feel, feel the height difference of my knees. It's quite severe, isn't oh it? Oh, my God! Yeah. <laughs> just, just like, I, good, I like that reaction. Oh, my God! And also, genuinely, <laughs> this is truth as well, bizarrely, my testicles hang at different... <laughs> Like that. 
incredible. <laughs> Can I just check? <laughs> did that happen? Yeah, it did. That definitely happened. Didn't it? <laughs> wow. Yeah. I haven't been so aroused since I saw your head in that box in seven. <laughs> <laughs> Is that wrong? Is that wrong? Very wrong. Right, I pretend I didn't say that. Actually, in terms of training, though, you, you train all the time, don't you? I do, yeah. Yeah, because in this movie, you're in your, I was going to say bra and pads, but you're in a bra and kind of... What? Trousers. Trousers. Kind of, kind yeah. Of, yeah. Uh, and you ripped. Oh. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah. I mean... Uh, <laughs> spray paint abs. Oh, it's so not. <laughs> it's so not. Because didn't a lady bid, was it £350,000 to do an aerobics lesson with you? What? Is that true? <laughs> I don't think that's true. It, says, it was to do an aerobics class with you and Madonna, and they paid £350,000. Oh, and then Madonna never turned up. <laughs> <laughs> Are you joking? <laughs> <laughs> Little Japanese lady outside with her check. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, that does sound like quite the workout. Yeah, I do uh, about an hour of dancing, kind of aerobics every day, and some. I gotta keep, you know, try and keep this thing together still, you know. Oh, please. I'm 40, I have two kids, you know, and they're making me take my shirt off in Iron Man. It's like, guys, come on. <laughs> you get away with it, I feel. Well, yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Now, because uh, Mo obviously trains a little more than the rest of us. Um, uh, <laughs> now, you you live in Portland, Oregon, all the time now. Um, I've lived there for the last last couple of years now. Okay. Been based there. And this is Alberto Salazar. Salazar. Mm -hmm. He's the guy who does it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, how many hours a day would you spend training? It's hard to say. I normally do a week, but 120 miles outside. Wow. If you so... double that to 240, you could do a full marathon. <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, have your own system, yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> Maybe that's what I'd do. But, so if my legs but, were the same but length, that's, But that's running outside. That's, that's running outside. outside. But then you do... He, this guy, Alberto Salazar, he's got all these weird kind of contraptions, mm -hmm. hasn't he? Yeah, train. we normally do another 15 to 20 miles uh, on the water treadmill, where it means sort of you're running... It's basically like a treadmill, but it's in the pool. Wow. And How underwater is this thing? It's just up to your waist. Oh, right, I thought you had to go... <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> it's, up, it's up to your waist, and then you've got this tube at the front there, and there's water coming out, and it's basically pushing you back to resist. Wow. And then, basically, you go at the same pace. Uh, now, a couple of things that fascinate me about you. One, and this gives hope to, to kids, you didn't want to be a runner, you wanted to be a footballer. I still want to be a footballer. <laughs> <laughs> when I see a football somewhere, I'm always like, yeah. want to go after it. But were you good at football? I thought I was good. <laughs> yeah. But I wasn't that good. You're better at running. Much better at running, for sure. And now, here's the other thing, and like, this is fascinating. You're a twin. Yeah. So I've got a picture of you and uh, your twin brother, Hassan. Is it Hassan? Uh, I was yeah. really hoping he was going to be massive and fat. <laughs> 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 no, the lazy like, one. Because what does that do? What does that do to, like, a... a like, because, right, the three of us can look at you and kind of go, well, you know, Mo is genetically different, so he's predisposed to be able to run like that. Hassan is looking at, he's genetically exactly the same as me. <laughs> yeah. Is he just lazy? <laughs> he's smoking like 40 fags a day. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's smoking for no, two. I'm joking, he yeah. doesn't smoke a bit. But uh, presumably he's thrilled for you. Uh, he's really yeah. happy for me and everything, but, you know, we just, we just live two different lives. You know what you could do? You know at the 13-mile mark, Hassan could just slip in. <laughs> That's going to be a good look at it. That'd be good. You just need to yeah. lose a couple of, couple of kilos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But now, uh, Super Saturday, Super Saturday was the, the 4th of August. And now, you weren't watching, were you, Gwyneth? I... I was not watching. <laughs> I know. What were you doing? What was more important? Uh, I was, um, in New York, and I just was just shit, and I forgot to <laughs> watch. <laughs> and I missed it. But I watched it because you the 4th of August is my birthday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think you mixed up the phrase, the 4th of August is my birthday, with I've just had a baby. <laughs> uh, the 4th of August, yeah, it's my birthday. And I actually booked a, a, a Michelin-starred restaurant and then at 5 o'clock cancelled it to watch the race at home. Oh. I was screaming, I was on my feet, like, go on, son. And yet he still came fifth, the Bulgarian bloke. <laughs> <laughs> 20 quid on him, 40 to 1. What a great <laughs> And for you, Mo, I mean, that's, it's such an enormous event in anybody's life. Are yeah. you still on a high from that, or...? It, 
at that point, um, it's just something, you know, you train for so hard for so many years and to get it right was amazing for me. And, you know, to have the Olympics right on your doorstep and have the crowd behind you was amazing. I know, cos no commuting just... or anything, it's yeah. easy to get to. <laughs> yes. You're zone three, it's handy, yeah. <laughs> I see what you mean, Mo. <laughs> Now, in those famous images of you kind of winning the race, what I love is you look so surprised. You look like no one ever mentioned you were quite good at running before. <laughs> <laughs> you look like, really? Everyone? I'm better than everyone. It's incredible. And of course, you, I, I'm sure you've all seen these. You know, on the internet, it's become like a, a meme. They've put that in lots of pictures. So it's Mo Farah running away from stuff. So, uh, for instance, there's Mo running away from a bear. <laughs> Here he is in Pamplona. I think Pamplona's in... There he is, with the ball, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, finally, this is my favourite one. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Very good. Uh, now, Lee Mack, uh, you're back on our televisions, a new series of Not Going Out. Mm -hmm. uh, this is series six. It's a sitcom on BBC One. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> the third episode went out earlier tonight, and uh, this series is different. Tim Vine, he gone. He's gone. Yeah, because it was, it was kind of, it was the two of you, it was yeah. your show. And, uh... Was it difficult to write him out? Uh, well, we, we decided we were going to do this big thing where we wrote him out over two or three or four episodes, or even the whole series. And I just thought, oh, I can't be arsed, the Olympics is on. So, uh, <laughs> we covered it in five seconds of the first episode. We literally did. Where's Tim? Germany. All oh, right. So, what are you up to? <laughs> <laughs> just get him out of the way, you know what I mean? He's old news now, you know what I mean? He's well, gone. Well, no, you haven't seen it, so you don't know. Oh, it's very good, then. It's very, yeah, no, it's it. very good, but there's a kind of a will-they-won't-they they with Lee and mm. this character, Lucy. Mm. Right. But this series, we finally find out, don't we? Well, we couldn't make our minds up, so we filmed two different endings. Oh. Yeah, so we, we can't decide which, which, which way to... Well, we have decided now, but oh, right, right to the wire of handing in the uh, tapes, yeah. DVDs... And how, how does it work? Do they, do they, you know, do that thing of, like, audience testing it? Like, what do people want to say? Or do you just sit around and decide yourselves? Yeah, we just did, We watched them back and just decided uh, which way to go, like, whether, whether I want to move it on to a family sitcom, married, kids and all that, oh. or whether we want to keep it exactly how it is for a while. Oh. You're probably wondering which way we've gone, aren't you, Gwyneth? I am. You I'm just have to tune in and wait to see. <laughs> <laughs> Backstage, she'll go, I'm not watching it, what happens? <laughs> yeah, I insist. So, yeah, we're not sure which way to go with it yet, but... People I'll... don't... We don't... You don't want to change the format, though, do you? That's the problem, so it's a Should dilemma. Should we vote right here? Should I reckon... We well, you'd have to watch it first before you can vote. You can't vote unless you've watched it. That's the rules. <laughs> well, we're about to watch a bit of this. Have a watch, uh, yeah, and then well, you decide yeah, after this. Yeah. Perfect. Lucy's yeah. not in this bit, though. She's not in this bit, yeah. yes. This is uh, uh, an exclusive clip from next week's episode. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, true. True. Garbo's nipples were made of spam. I looked it up on Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, uh, talking about not going out, who could go out when you could stay home and make all the delicious recipes <laughs> in Gwyneth's new book, It's All So Good? <laughs> now, what's really... Like, I believe you really cook these things. I do. You're not just the celebrity face of this. No. God, no. Why would I bother? To money. There's no money in that. <laughs> oh, come on. Someone's <laughs> no. gonna buy it. I know no. I got a free copy, so I... <laughs> <laughs> You've lost out there straight yes. away, but... Because uh... <laughs> the first book, uh, which I have, and I have cooked things from it, that potato cake, delicious. Thank you very much. But I feel some of the delicious potato, like, that potato cake wouldn't be in this book now, would it? No, the idea of this book was to make food that is, like, as delicious as the first book and kind of comfort food like that, but just that little bit healthier. No butter. No, no <laughs> butter, no gluten. Now, because this is the elimination diet. It, it was sort of inspired by the elimination diet. I, I had some health things crop up, and my doctor had me go on the elimination diet. And uh, I didn't really, couldn't really think of, in my hallucination, eating brown rice and whatever, I couldn't really think of what to cook. So I started creating these recipes and because I thought, you know, why, why is it that people who want to lose a bit of weight or, you know, be a bit healthier, you know, have really tasteless food? It shouldn't be that way. Now, some of the elimination things I get, like no coffee, no alcohol, yes. even no dairy, because, I mean, I, I resist, but I mean, I've fallen it first two hurdles but, um, <laughs> but no deep water fish what's wrong with deep water oh, fish well deep water fish apparently have a lot of mercury in them so they're not not good to eat a lot am oh. i the only person that doesn't know how deep each individual fish swims? <laughs> <laughs> you 
idiot. <laughs> It's going to be hard at the fish and chip shop, though, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. How, uh, how deep does that cost? Can I just say, oh. if you're at the fish and chip shop, yeah. you're not doing the elimination. <laughs> right. That's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, lots of delicious recipes. Some of them, some of them, um, uh, Gwyneth, Gwyneth, I don't understand them. Okay. For instance, there's one here for now. Uh, it's a recipe, two recipes for leftover quinoa. Right. Who doesn't finish their quinoa? <laughs> <you know? laughs> How do you end up with leftover quinoa? <laughs> the cry at the end of a meal is more quinoa, mom. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing left over, surely. That's a mystery. Yes. I'll be waiting some time before I get to cook that. <laughs> Plates licked clean. <laughs> mm. uh, <laughs> no. But I have to say. <laughs> There are lots of delicious. There are lots of, like the, the. Don't leave it at that. What is it? <laughs> quinoa. What's quinoa? You don't know what quinoa is. I genuinely don't know what quinoa. Is. You're joking, right? No. I thought well, that's what you meant. But everyone knows. Doesn't. What is quinoa? Quinoa. It's like cross between couscous and cat litter. <laughs> right. <laughs> not wrong. I mean, it's, it's not. You are so. You won't add my quinoa then. Oh, Do you know what you. quinoa is? Am I the only it's one? It's a oh, He loves it. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, quinoa. <laughs> Is it a sort of wheat or something? Oh, no, you don't know, do you, see? <laughs> no. It's I've eaten it. It's not wheat. It's its own grain. It's very high in protein. It's, it's good for you. No, and as you eat it, you believe that. <laughs> 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 it's one of those things you're like, this is really good for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, you... My version of quinoa is really good. And can I just I say, care. you've served it with a fried egg on top, so yeah. I'm already thrilled. OK, good. <laughs> yeah. Now, because uh, uh, the photographs of the book are lovely, there's yeah. pictures of the food, but then some of the big... Like, to illustrate avocado toast, I'm not sure that was the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's breakfast, you know? Avocado <laughs> toast. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you dreaming of avocado toast there? <laughs> <laughs> An actress prepares. <laughs> are you allowed my personal favourite, the pot noodle sandwich? Yeah, that. Quite Chicken happy. and mushroom, drain all the thing out, get a nice bit of cheap white bread, plonk it in, squeeze it. <laughs> I bet, is that in your book, Gwyneth? <laughs> I, I just threw up in my mouth. So. <laughs> is that from when you remembered when you touched my testicles? Because <laughs> <laughs> what about, you know, on, you know, for, say, for on, on Sunday for the marathon, yeah. do you have special food you'll eat? Yeah, no. Uh, my aim is definitely the night before the race. I'll eat a lot of carbs, uh, make sure I get good food. And then in the morning, I'll try and eat like six hours before, at least five hours. And I won't eat anything heavy. I'll eat like maybe porridge, some toast, have a coffee. And I just make sure mainly stay hydrated. That's more important than anything else. But before a race, I'll definitely <laughs> avoid sort of any fried stuff, like deep fried, milk, just anything. Not even a fried egg? No. With quinoa? <laughs> <laughs> No, so, no fried food? No fried, yeah. Oh, I wonder what it would look like if somebody offered you fried food, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that sausage and batter, it looks delicious. Uh, and now, at home, because I, I imagine yourself and Chris, you're a very kind of cosmopolitan, metropolitan <laughs> couple. And, well, no, because we have a vision of your life. Right. But it seems like you do all the cooking. Does Chris ever cook? Um, he cooked twice. <laughs> That's and it. both times the fire brigade came. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes, that is a true story. What was he trying to cook? I don't know because <laughs> the house was full of smoke and the fire brigade turned up. The second time the fire brigade must have been really unamused. <laughs> Actually, the second time the fire brigade came, they opened the door and uh, Chris opened the door and the guy said, uh, "You've been cooking again, Chris." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And in terms of, you know, because obviously you've got uh, two young children. Yes. So when you have, like, a children's party or something, mm -hmm. do, you, do you do Rice Krispies and chocolate? <laughs> do please God say yes? Of course. Oh, good. <laughs> I do good. them all, the, you know, yummy cakes and food. Because I've heard you talking about British children's parties. Oh. And you've been dissing them, Gwyneth. Oh, no. You, yes, you were. You were on American TV. You dissing our parties, <laughs> saying they were just damp old church halls Wait, with crappy this... sandwiches. OK, am I right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I think it's fascinating because I think if there's one area where you can really sort of discern the difference between American and British culture, it's 
kids' birthday parties. Mm. So, you know, in America, we're all, like, embarrassingly over too much food and too many attractions. Really? Do Americans eat a lot? It doesn't show. <laughs> <laughs> it does. No, it doesn't show tonight, but usually it does. I've been living two years out there. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's you and me that live here, Lee, OK? <laughs> I mean, I'm putting on a lot of weight. Look at that. <laughs> that was down there. <laughs> but do you, when you're here, do you? I live here. Well, I know, but but do you have to try and purposely make your children's parties crap? No. <laughs> well, you you I, go I all out. It's hilarious. I think you know you can go to like the richest man in London's kids' party, and it's like in a church basement <laughs> with like some sort of weird, creepy. Perf kids performer, entertainer <laughs> type person. But aren't you planning a kids party at the moment? Is Moses' birthday? Yes, it's gonna, yes. It was actually already his birthday, but we're gonna have his party soon, yes. Look, the planning is so extensive. I'm gonna be the ugliest American of all time and overdo everything. Is it like just, Cirque du Soleil? It's gonna be Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> With crisps. <laughs> <laughs> Are you having a petting zoo? You've had petting zoos in the past. I think we might have a petting <gasps> zoo. So how does a petting zoo, does it just come in the back of a van, a petting zoo? Yeah. It does. Just, what do you get? Do you get anything good? You get, like, um, bunnies and, you know, all kinds of things. Do you get a sheep? A sheep? Um, that's your kid's party. That's your... <laughs> oh, is that a lame animal who <laughs> wants to get a sheep? Did you say Graham's kid's party? <laughs> <laughs> you really don't know who he is, do you? <laughs> Because, I think, because how old is your stepdaughter, Bo? She's seven. Seven. So, have you been to, like, sports days now at school? Yeah. Have you been in the father's race? I haven't. I've just been there to help her and you to talk to the kids and... Because, <laughs> like, the fathers must be like, oh, geez, here he comes. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, stop halfway. <laughs> and just, uh, very quickly, before we move on, is it true that you and your brother Hassan, you can't cross your legs? I now, cannot cross my legs. But why can't you do that? I just can't do it. When I'm sitting, serious, when I was at school in assembly, I'm always used to just sit like this. I can't cross my legs. Sit like that. Yeah. But I can't, cannot cross my legs. It just, just hurts so my knees and comfortable. If you try and put that leg over that now, you won't be able to do it. I could do it, but it just... It hurts. It hurts my knees. Really? Those are a billion hurt. pound knees. Don't <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I can't cross my legs because you know that big testicle that's hanging down. I can't... <laughs> <laughs> you know that. <laughs> Let me show you again. Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> you get one go. Yeah. You get one go. <laughs> Listen, it's time for music. Uh, now, this Manchester duo have sold two million records, are one of my favourite bands. I'm thrilled to have them back, performing their new single, Blind. Please welcome Hertz! <laughs> Hertz, everybody! Come and join me, you! Beautiful. How are you? Nice to see you. Lovely to see you. Oh! It's all marvellous. I noticed he kept the gloves on for the shake. I think he's worried about the flu epidemic. <laughs> 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 I've just got very, very dirty hands. Really? <laughs> now you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you like it excessively. The last time I saw you, you had an eye mask on. Yeah, because I uh, got a little injury. Oh, yeah. is that the, is that That's new... it, there. Oh, wow. That's the scar. That's a proper injury. Because last time I had to wear sunglasses to hide the grotesque. <laughs> Eye that was yeah, falling yeah, out, yeah, yeah. which I did. I fell over. And ironically, <laughs> you were doing the video for Blind. Yeah, <laughs> we're making a video for Blind. It's just a good job it wasn't called Bollocks or something. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, no, I could have helped you out there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, that, that is the new single. It's out now, isn't it? Yes. Uh, Blind. And that's off. I was going to say, new album, but it's been out a while. Mm. Uh, Hurts Exile. It's in my car. That's where that is. Aww. No, it was interesting, because well, just after you finished the song, I, you guys were talking about you, what you listen to when you train. Yeah. So you do have an iPod in when you're running. Yeah. I listen to a lot of something as a good... It depends. Sometimes when you're struggling, you want something with a beat. I listen to a lot of, like, Dizzy Rascal. Yeah. Good, yeah. good choice. That gets you going. Yeah, it gives you a good beat. Do you stop the music halfway? Or do you... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> just saying, just saying. Sorry, just saying. <laughs> And listen, people, people, you know, you read things about people and you kind of think, is that true? But I read that you guys are, you're so concerned now about your look and, and the, the kind of the style you've gone for that you've thrown all your regular clothes away. <laughs> so concerned. That no, was just a bit to make things easy. 
But you have. You've cleared out your wardrobe. It's all just black suits. And yeah, it just means you can get changed really quickly and in the dark, which makes it easier. Doesn't <laughs> it's it? hard to exercise. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to do sports and yeah. exercise. You and can't it. jog in a suit. Well, you I like, can. I like, to, I like to flirt with the gym. I sort of walk past it in these clothes and go... <laughs> oh, I'm tired. What's missing, lads, is a tie. And uh, <laughs> he's got one. I've got the one for you. Look at that. Look at that little baby. Look at that. Oh, no. is, what's that, is that taped on? It's taped on, yeah, because uh, I don't oh. want another child stealing it. <laughs> <laughs> so I got it. <laughs> but no, but you, seriously, you don't own any other clothes now? No, well... No. It's, no. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We didn't for a long... I didn't know for a long time. I've not had a pair of trainers for about... I've never six seen years. Trainers. I've You've got, got one. I've got trainers and a pair of shorts. One pair of shorts. You need at least one. Yeah, for the it's summer. It's a nice way to do it. But are you going to, like, if we do get a summer, like, are you going to. Yeah, that's it, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was lovely today, Gwyneth. Was it? Yes. So now you grey and freezing cold is your <laughs> definition <laughs> of lovely. <laughs> no, today was all right. What? You were on crack. It was not. <laughs> 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 it was freezing and grey. <laughs> okay, audit. Was it freezing and grey today? <laughs> well, I was inside all day. <laughs> <laughs> you were hunting for quinoa. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, before we go, before we go, uh, time for a story or two in the red chair. So, who have you got? Who've you got? Hello. How are you doing? I'm grand, and yourself? Yeah, I'm all right. You know. Ah, good. And what's your name? Owen. Owen. Yeah. And uh, you're from Ireland, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, uh, County Kerry. Oh, uh, County Kerry? Yeah. But which bit? Causeway, North Kerry. North, North Kerry. Yeah. You know it, North Kerry. <laughs> you think it's grey here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, do you live there? No, no, I live in Greenwich here in London. Oh, right. What do you do, Owen? I'm a civil engineer, so oh, I'm working oh, here in London. Clever. Uh, off, off you go with the story, Owen. So I was in Thailand with a mate of mine, Rory, and anyway, we decided we'd head, <laughs> we, we decided we'd head off on scooters there one of the days, and we headed off into the countryside. So, <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> so, so, yeah, we, became, uh, we were getting pretty hungry on the scooters, and anyway, we said we'd stop off somewhere just to get something to eat. So we saw this kind of beer garden. It was in the middle of nowhere, and uh, there was kind of a beer garden, a bit of a restaurant. So we pulled over anyway and went through the beer garden. They had those canopies, you know, outside. Oh, yeah. And uh, went inside, small restaurant. There was a guy over in the corner. He was drinking a beer and having his rice and beef or horse, whatever it was. And uh, <laughs> anyway, I asked the uh, waitress, uh, could I get a menu, please? And... Uh, and she didn't really speak any English. So, anyway, she uh, I eventually persuaded her and given us the same food that the guy had. So, she gave us the food eventually, and I was there, can I have two beers, please? And she got really frustrated with us, and language barrier was a bit of a problem. So, she headed outside, and she got her son or somebody like that to come back in, and he had a bit of English. And, uh, anyway, I explained to him, look, man, can I just get the menu, and can I have two beers, please? And your man goes, uh, this is not a restaurant, this is somebody's house. This a very address. Thank you to all my guests tonight. Hertz, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Pedro Almodovar, comedian Dara O'Brien, singer Alison Moye, and Formula One star Lewis Hamilton. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>The Matt Lucas Awards next on BBC One and Ruby Wax is on hand with her nominations. All over on BBC Three now, you can catch another Family Guy. 